Hello folks, how's it going? It's Jimmy Morrow here again down at Dreadnought Forge. Um, speaking before about uh, ways that we can maintain our tools, our custom knife, our trusty companion that we've been out and about adventuring with, out around in the great wilds, but um, what steps can we take to, to make sure that this, lasts, this tool lasts a lifetime? Now, I've already spoken earlier on about uh, Ways that we can treat the, the leather of the sheath and uh, treat you know give the, the wood a bit of attention every once in a while to nourish it and just to make it uh, last as long as possible, last a lifetime in fact. Now, um, talking already about steel, how to treat the steel and basically how to stop any wee patches of, of corrosion or rust or anything like that establishing and basically taking care of it as soon as we can. Another part, an important part, is the edge. Now, there's thousands, there's thousands of people out there with you know advice about how to do the edge uh, to sharpen the knife how to, to how to maintain it now i'm just going to show you what i do well the things that i to to basically make my tools as sharp as possible both in the work that i make and send out into the world and also um the tools i use to put in the workshop here as well now for this i'm just going to use my own knife this i showed you this before this is this is a boy I made, eight, you know, one of the first ones ever made, and it's just stuck round. So this is this is my one. This is my piece. So it's not I'm not messing around with any customers' uh, knives here. Okay, so this is my one. Now, um, bearing in mind that well, the old adage that your, your great granddad used to tell you would be maintenance better than kind of doing things from scratch. So, in the case of a of a of a sharp blade. Continually making you know making small efforts to maintain the edge is better than trying to totally resharpen the whole thing once it's totally blunt and dead. Now, again, look on YouTube. There's 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 guys out there who are amazingly skilled with sharpening with hand tools and stones. And to be fair, um, I have a couple of tools in here that I use when I'm making a knife. The, that I would use to establish a certain degree on the edge, like a, that I think is best suits that knife for the intended purpose. Um, it's a Lansky system. It's just a very simple. You can look on Amazon. You can look in many other places that sell these things. I find this, and I find it works really, really well. Especially if you get a, like a diamond stone attachment. Now, uh, graduated different angles: seventeen for kitchen knives, twenty for hunters, twenty-five and thirty for more heavy-duty edges. Uh, we're going to talk again about what those different angles could be used for. But anything that's going out of my shop basically has either got a convex edge where I'm, I'm using the belt grinder just to like give a nice, what they call an apple seed, kind of like a rounded edge that kind of has a particular you know, purpose, but particular particular job for it designed to do. Or it's got like a secondary bevel, what they what call a secondary bevel, which is just the angle at which it actually does the cutting on the edge of the blade. Now, most of the stuff that I would send out, if it's a, if it's an outdoors knife at all, I'll go for twenty. It's a good it's a good angle to start with, and it'll do most jobs. If it's a kitchen knife, I'll go with a bit a bit finer, seventeen, something like that there. But generally, I'll establish the the, the, the angles with the wee Lansky. No big secrets. Although there's far uh, fancier systems out there, but that's what I've got. Um, so, um, I would recommend. Well, let me see. First of all, maintaining maintaining the edge. If you do this step every once in a while, or even in between um, using the knife, uh, even if it's a big job, I know guys that are uh, like maybe processing game or whatever else, they might have to resharpen the knife two or three times before the whole work is done. And um, there's lots of videos out there talking about straps. Now this is a this is something I've shown to me. I had never heard it before. Lots of you have, I'm sure, but I never heard this before until someone showed me, so I'm going to show you. Now, strap is leather. Attached, well, I find it a lot easier to use if it's attached to a nice flat piece of wood. Okay? That's all you need. Just a wee thin slip of leather. It could be a belt, an old belt, um, but something fairly thick to make it last a bit longer. Just has to be like a, a wee thin strip. And a nice flat piece of wood, as flat a surface as you can find. It could be, it could be a, like a slab, it could be a tabletop, or anything like that. There, you can, you know, in the, I usually use be off cuts of leather when I'm doing my leather work to just touch up my leather work cutting tools. The cut, you know, the things actually used to slice the hide. Just every once in a while, I take a wee off cut and use this. Now, I have my shop strap, <laughs> very fancy name for a piece of wood with two bits of leather on, one nice and clean. The other side, it's got uh, 
this polish off. It basically this uh, a stand-in for strop a stropping compound. Now, again, second use for our metal polish. In this case, auto saw. See my bit of leather here, nice flat surface, just wee spots of auto saw metal polish, and then a few wee dots. Got our mineral oil back here again. A few wee dots in between. Not too much. I've probably got too much on this at the moment. And I have this here. If you can find some rubber matting, sometimes you find them in kind of like home stores and you know for for kitchenware. You know, a rubber placemat is fantastic. It stops things moving around on your bench. It's fantastic. It stops you chasing your sharpening stone. Right. So set it down flat on a flat, nice flat surface. Take your blade, set edge edge away. Stop. Put your the edge of the knife down flat at the top and draw it towards yourself. Now. For this operation, the angle that you s present the, the, the blade to the, the strop is not as important as it is if you're using a sharpening stone. We'll cover that in a minute. All we're trying to do is polish that edge and we're trying to, um, there's a, the actual cutting part, the very, very tip of the cutting part is quite a fine, fine piece of metal. And that, it's often called a burr. And sometimes when you're using it, it can, can fold it over and we're trying to just basically fold it back up again so it's, it's nice and sh you know that's what gives it the sharpness the actual thing that cuts the material so we're basically trying to fold it back uh, up in the straight position or at least you know polish the edge we're trying to get a nice mirror uh, you know a mirror reflection on the cutting edge on the secondary bevel um, that means that the, the steel will cut through the material nice there's not as much as resistance as if it is like a rough surface it'll give a nice you know it'll glide through the material a lot, lot easier and that's what we're trying to do with our strap so i'm trying to angle it here so basically bring it up to the top here and draw it down towards yourself now that's all it is that is all it is um 10 times each side and then see where you are if you know it shouldn't take that much. If you do that quite regularly, um, you will not need to sharpen your knife for a long, long time. You know, it'll keep an edge, it, that will maintain the edge for a long, long time. I will not have to do major resharpen for for a great, great while. If you do, again, there's lots of, well, lots of resources out there for guys who do it by hand all the time and they give great, great advice and guides about how to do it. Check out Ben Orford. He's uh, got some good ideas for like even making um, sharpening stones from workshop materials. Now, I don't have, uh, I've got my bench grinder here. If I really have to re retouch a, an edge, I'll use my bench grinder with some very fine belts. I can cheat, but it's not very good for my clients who don't have to do th this for themselves, don't have the advantage of a bench grinder, say. An old oil stone, got this at an auction, you know, in a, in a bargain box, a couple of pounds. Okay. What is better? Nice diamond stone. This is a rough diamond stone. Um, not very expensive. eBay, Amazon. But worth its weight in gold if you're trying to do this job on a regular basis. Again, um, keep it moist. Or don't have to keep it moist, but every once in a while, give it a wash. Clear the debris out of like the out of the grains of the of the of the stone. Now, I'm sure you can find a whole lot better guys to this here, but it's a matter of well, another top tip. That's, it's quite wide in, in the knifey community, but maybe not so much if you're new and just uh, you're being exposed to this for the first time. Marker pen along your edge. So you can see the untouched metal. You know, put your stone in your nice non slip map and basically find your angle that you want to sharpen to. Now some people use 10 piece, 2 10 piece, 3 10 piece just to give you that wee guide on top of the stone to get that angle. Take a 10 piece away and then I like to draw it towards me. On a smooth motion. Give it 3 or 4 licks. And then check and see how much of that marker pen is still there. If you can see marker pen at the very very edge then you haven't reached the edge just yet and readjust your technique up or down just to get that angle just correct lovely wee stone wee diamond stone for out and about in your backpack out in the field falcon oven dc4 love it brilliant rough stone on one side smooth stone on the other gives a fantastic portable finish thanks very much see you later going guys bye bye